When the calendar turns to March, I don't know about you, but I think about one thing, basketball. And I know Indiana Fever head coach Stephanie White probably in that category as well, but she's probably thinking about basketball every month of the year, but so busy this time of the year. Stephanie, what is it like for you in the month of March? Um, it's awesome. It's like Christmas. You right. know, there's so many games that are on and, you know, championship week this week. I've just all I've been doing is watching games and with the NCAA tournament, looking at potential draft picks and and then really turning the page in terms of strategically thinking about what we're going to be doing fe this fever season. We've, we've gotten, you know, new players and we've had some player movement. And by the end of this 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 month, um, we'll have an idea about the draft and and that gives me a little bit more direction in terms of, of planning. So if you're not aware, just to update you on the busy life of Stephanie White, four hats at least that I want to focus on. Of course, the Indiana Fever head coach getting ready for your first season as head coach. You're a busy women's college basketball analyst on ESPN. So during the NCAA tournament, you'll be on the road. Uh, when you can fit us in your schedule, Pacers <laughs> Live analyst as well on Fox Sports Indiana. And of course, a mom to three beautiful young boys. So what is the job like right now with the fever as far as getting ready for the upcoming season? Um, it's, it's starting to get really busy. You know, now that we're, we're turning the page and, and it's, it's finally within s distance, you know, we can see what's, what's happening. Um, it, it's about really just getting everything down in terms of um, offensively, the things that we might want to run defensively, the strategies that we might want to employ, and then to start prepping for training camp start putting together um, what we're going to do in practice and, and how we want to go about laying our foundation and, 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 and really get, get focused on, um, on, on that prep for, for the on-court stuff. When you're going to watch the women's college basketball teams in the NCAA tournament, you have to think big picture for the fever as well. You're an analyst, but are you a scout a little bit as well? I'm a scout every day. Uh, I'm a scout every day. I see that tall girl walking in, the <laughs> gym, in it, whatever gym that I'm there. Um, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I think um, being an analyst gives me a, a unique perspective to be able to see these players in practice situations and shoot around situations, in-game management, how they respond to coaching, you know, all of those things um, that are so integral in, in them being able to continue at the next level and, and in terms of the type of players that you want in, in your system. And for me, that we want here um, in terms of character players and coachable players as well. How uh, interesting is it, though, to keep an eye on the Pacers as well? And, and when you're preparing to broadcast a women's college basketball game and then a random Wednesday, you're working with us on Pacers Live pregame. You've got to differentiate a little bit, but in some ways, some things are the same. Yeah, you know, I think um, the same in terms of just you know, watching the game and the strategy employed. It, it's just different focuses. You know, the, in the college game, it's a much more broader focus in terms of the the way that game plans are approached. In the pro game, it's much more about picking out the weak length and then going at it and exploiting it and um, strategic when you're playing a team for the third, fourth, fifth time. Um, but at the same time for me, you know, it's about watching basketball and uh, nothing beats just being able to watch the game, be in the gym. I've certainly enjoyed the opportunities to, to be able to be around Frank and, and his staff and, and to continue to learn. And, um, and, and for me, it's all about, you know, preparing up for, for our season, but also learning and continuing to become a better coach. Do you ever wake up one morning and say, okay, what do I have to do today? Where's my primary focus? Obviously the fever, it's a big part of your job every day, but some days it's not maybe the primary focus. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there are certainly times where you where you you have to um, to to structure your time in a way that you give. I give the attention to game prep, you know, for this three hours, and then give my attention to fever stuff for this two hours. And you know, ultimately um, throughout the day, and, and and while I'm traveling, I try to get as much work done as I can because I, again, when I'm home, I want to be home and I want to be mom and I want to enjoy my kids as well. So. Um, the good thing is that, that none of it feels like work, so, so I enjoy it every day. And speak to that on the family side of things. I know they get to be around you here at the field house different times, so that's kind of a, a blessing that your job can be open to them as well. But uh, this is probably a tough month. You start the month of March sometimes and say, you may not see yeah. as much from mom this month. See you on FaceTime. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. March is, is really brutal in terms of the college season and being on the road. Um, fortunately, yes, you, you, we do have FaceTime and we can, you know, talk. And I am home for a couple of weeks right now. Um, um, th this year I'm not doing the men's tournament, so it takes me back a little bit and gives me some more time. But it is a busy time. But at the end of the day, you know, I also think it's important for, for my boys to see a, a strong role model in terms of work ethic and, you know, what it takes to reach and accomplish your goals and understand that, you know, not everything is always just handed to you and it doesn't just happen. You have to make it happen. So I think there are a lot of good life lessons that go along with it. Um, 
but it's it's a it's a fun career. They get to be in the gym. A lot of times they'll get to travel with me too. So it's uh, it's certainly a tremendous opportunity for all of us. It's a great month. Was March. Uh in the late 90s when Purdue won the national championship, is that how high does that rank on your uh, your best months ever? Oh, ultimately number one. Winning a national championship is just the greatest feeling in the world, you know, and, 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 and close second was certainly winning the WNBA championship. I think when you grow up as a kid, you know, you always envision yourself playing for a state championship, a national championship, uh, you know, at the time not a professional championship because when I was growing up the league wasn't here. Um, but, you know, more importantly, I think just the sacrifice, the blood, sweat and tears that you put into it and, and to understand that you finally accomplished that ultimate goal of winning a championship. Um, and then for me to have been so lucky to have been able to be a part of teams on a num both levels to be able to do it um, was awesome. Well, we certainly look forward to watching you on TV in the middle of March, then getting some time on our television on Pacers Live, and then talking to you as a coach when the calendar turns to May. Stephanie White, best of luck with the madness. Thanks so much, JJ.